<laughs> Joining us now, uh, it's Kamal Franklin, who's the founder and board president of Community Movement Builders and a dedicated community organizer for over 20 years, along with Kalanji Changa, uh, who is an award-winning political activist and the founder of a national coordinator of the social justice organization, FTP Movement. And they're both co-hosts of the longtime political podcast, Renegade Culture. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us on Like It or Not. How are you doing? Doing good. Actually, an absolute pleasure. I, I had I had a chance to come on your show um, back during the election, and um, I I knew and, and actually Kamal, I've I've known your work here in Atlanta uh, for some time. Um, tell us about the two of you, your activism, and the the collaboration that you're doing with Renegade Culture. Kamal, I'll start with you. Um, well, you know, we've known each other for a few years through organizing in activist circles. Uh, I, I would call them like self-determination circles, organizing in the black community, um, both, you know, uh, doing our own thing. And a few years ago, we decided to sort of join up and to create sort of an umbrella organization called the Seattle Movement, where we took our different formations um, and basically formed sort of an alliance um, where we decided to do uh, community work together, youth programming, uh, organizing uh, rallies, uh, infrastructure building. And I think even part of what came out of that in terms of developing our friendship uh, was Renegade Culture, which became our podcast and sort of sort of a signature way in which we sort of talked to a larger audience. So, you know, we've been rocking with each other for a couple of years. Sometimes people are a little shocked to see us together, you know, because I'm so, you know, handsome and debonair and all that kind of stuff. And I'm running with Kalanji. So, you know, that kind of stuff, I have to put them down, let them know that my man is cool even though I, I got to carry things sometimes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Kalaji, uh, on, on, the, on, the, on Renegade um, culture, like you guys, y'all not playing around with this thing, right? Y'all, you guys cut straight to the core of the matter. You talk about whether or not socialism is good for black people or you, you cut to uh, the rights of black people to bear arms. It has a revolutionary perspective. Talk about the, the, the podcast and the show. Oh, man. Yeah, podcast is... Um for us, it, it's a, a tool for liberation. You know what I mean? We, we like to use uh, what we call the cherry cough drop theory. We make it taste so good that folks forget it's medicine. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So um, Money. We, are, we are organizers and freedom fighters first. Uh, we use whatever form of creative resistance that we can to, uh, you know, to get our point across. So uh, renegade culture is, you know, I mean, it, it fits because the renegade is in his culture, you know, and mm. we... we you know, we love our job, but we want to, you know, share the share the love with other people in a way that, uh, you know, everyday people can understand, you know, and do. Yeah. 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 I love the, um, um, the, the, the analogy, like you, it, you make it so good that people don't realize that they're getting their medicine mm -hmm. um, because that's, that's uh, talk about the, the, the hesitation and the reticence that you get or the pushback that you get from even in black, the black community, right? Because it, it's not, we're not just fighting for liberation against white supremacy. We're fighting for liberation against white supremacy that's embedded in the minds of even black people. Uh, I don't know which one of you want to take that, but uh, speak to that for me. I'll, I'll, let the, I'll let the less attractive guy go first. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I would say, you know, when we, you know, we are decidedly radicals, right? We are decidedly in a, in a certain camp that um, it doesn't mean we won't have fuller discussions with everybody in terms of different ideas and ideologies within a larger black community. Uh, but we come at it from a certain uh, vantage point of we are for the self-determination of our folks. If there's a, uh, an institution or organization that has power over our people, we need to control that institution, control that organization, control that political entity, what we need to destroy and or get it off our backs. So, you know, we don't, we don't, we're not wishy-washy when it comes to, you know, what we think um, needs to happen for our liberation, right? Uh, so we get pushback, I would say, uh, uh, obviously conservatives, but, you know, more, probably more surprisingly, maybe even less surprisingly, I guess, from like liberals, right? Not only white liberals, but black liberals. So we get folks who are like sort of tied into the apparatus of the Democratic Party to where they can't separate themselves and the needs of black people from the Democratic Party. Um, mm. And some folks we work with um, who work strategically within the Democratic Party, but there are others who they see the black struggle as one in, one in the same. Uh, they mm -hmm. see whatever's good for the Democrats must be good for black folks. And we don't mm. think that is the mm. history that we as a people 
um, can point to that says that whatever the Democrats want or need, it doesn't necessarily uh, match up with what our needs are as a people. And so, you know, that sometimes becomes a, a rub um, for us mm. talking about, like, you know, the, the, what Joe Biden represents, right? We think mm-hmm. Trump obviously represents a certain overt form of white supremacy. We think Biden represents mm. a more subvert uh, type of white supremacy, but still it's white supremacy. Um, so it doesn't mean we don't have to deal with these folks in these politics, but we have to have a certain vantage point again in, in thinking of what it is that we want to get out of the system as opposed to being co-opted by it. Mm. Right. So, I think um, to add on to what, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was ahead. going to say to add on, add on to what Kamal was saying, I think that, um, you know, we represent a sect of the community that's often ignored. Um, and I think that even within the quote unquote grassroots organization, organizing communities, we are somewhat um, outcast because we have an unorthodox style of organizing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We're not politically correct because the politics are correct. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, our, our style is, is, is it, it's more brazen. It, it's, uh, I, I guess it can be compared to, um, I would say, a cross between uh, an NWA and a public enemy if you were talking hip hop. You know, we, okay. we, we come with that, that raw, uh, uncut, uh, that, that the masses can feel, that the, the lumping can, can uh, unite with. But at the same time, you know, we, we were able to dibble and dabble in all types of different circles. So with Renegade Culture, when you check it out, you might see uh, former Congresswoman Cynthia McKinney one day. The next day, you might see Killer Mike on there. Um, yeah. You may see uh, speech from the rest of development. The next day, you might see a, you know, a grassroots gun club from, from Louisiana. You know, yeah. So we try to you know, hit all angles you know, from the, the quote unquote elders or what we call the OGs, the original gorillas, to you know, to the youth. You know, because we think that it's important for us to, you know, leave no no uh, no stones unturned. Mm. I mean that's pretty big, you guys, um and a lot of people might call that a radical thing, right? You got you said NWA, that NWA, that's pretty radical um, for a lot of people. But mm. the, the thing that you're doing, uh, the organizing is still very important. It doesn't matter because some people may not like how it's uh, uh, packaged. You know, a lot of Democrats like things to be packaged a certain kind of way. Um, and uh, you mentioned something, you don't, you guys aren't wishy-washy. And when it comes to Joe Biden, um, it, he 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 gives a wishy washy vibe, and you said that you know he he gives uh, he still gives a form of white supremacy. When you do state things like that, um, is there is there pushback from other people who are organizing who who don't want to organize with you guys because you speak these you speak the truth, um, what I call the truth about uh, Joe Biden. I mean, I would say, I mean, yeah, we I mean we are old school organizers, so we know all the folks. And sort of the grassroots circles, folks who've been around most, you know, 20, 30 years. Uh, some are still friends, some are not, you know, because that mm. stuff happened. But, you know, we know all those folks, some of the folks we've been become sort of celebrity activists and organizers at this stage, right? Um, so there's definitely folks that uh, I would say individually don't mess with uh, me anymore because, you know, I, I think there's mm. got to be an opportunity to talk about movement capture, right? an opportunity to talk about, uh, we know everybody Everybody needs resources to do this kind of work, that's, that's understood. But when we so closely align our politics with, again, what's needed within the Democratic Party to win elections, sometimes we forget that those same Democrats also voted for welfare reform that mm-hmm. devastated our community, or they also voted to bring in the prison industrial complex, which devastated our community. Uh, that mm-hmm. they've also worked close hand in hand with white supremacists, that their international politics are around hegemony and keeping white supremacy and European control of resources and nation states under the U.S. system. So all mm-hmm. those things, those, those, so those, those differences, which may matter somewhat on the ground, a little bit here and there, don't for us outweigh the larger context in which the Democratic Party operates um, and our, our um, challenge to them sort of vis-a-vis opposition in the United States as an oppressed people, um, as a people who uh, come from a place where we need to resist, um, not only what the Republicans are throwing down, but the Democrats are throwing down, because in the end, they're interested in maintaining their power, their wealth, their system, and we have to be interested in maintaining our right to self-determination, gaining power, 
and controlling resources in our own institutions and organizations. Hmm. I, I, I love that talk, man. I love that because mm-hmm. it cuts the core of the reality. Um, the reality that we're not just fighting against white supremacy in the form of the Republican Party, but they're obviously and clearly very transparently is white supremacy in the Democratic Party. What bugs me out about this, though, is that it, it is it is a game it's a, it's a game to so many people where as long as their team is in power. Yeah, I mean, I voted for Joe Biden because I wanted to get rid of the white supremacist in chief. But it took less than five days of him in office for me to realize, oh, we're going to have to fight just as hard against Joe Biden as we fought against Donald Trump. And yeah. it's like we, we're dealing with an entire like sometimes I feel like this this fight is hopeless because so many people are wrapped into the overly simplistic thing of if my guy is doing it, it's fine. If Barack Obama is dropping drones, that's fine. If if yeah. Kamala Harris is going to be, you know, dropping some pink and green drones, then that's fine. How do mm-hmm. we separate that? Like, like it's, it's an ongoing challenge that has been going on for years. But how do you guys strategically strike at that 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 false dichotomy that so many people are wrapped up in? Again, you know, our, our tagline is sucker free news, politics and social commentary. You know what I mean? So. You know, by default, you know, we we have to come, you know, heavy like a Chevy. You know, we, we got to bring it home the way it is because of the fact that I think that uh, our, our people are in the, you know, they suffer from the illusion of inclusion. You know what I'm saying? They think that, you know, at some point, you know, if we just, you know, it's, it's like playing this thing away. You know, we can, it, it's almost like, you know, when, when folks smoke, you know, or, or drink, you know, you're, you're trying to get high, you're trying to, you know, get to another scene or whatever for the time being. But when that high goes down, you're still in the same conditions that you started out in. Um, mm. You know, we are abolitionists. We are clear that the system itself is flawed. So whether they have, uh, you know, a Kamala Harris or a Ben Dixon or a Kamal Franklin in office, you know, like we talked about before, you know, it, it's like McDonald's. You can come in there as a, as a, uh, uh, a, a master chef, you know what I mean? But whatever is on the menu, what we're eating. You understand what I'm saying? You're not coming with uh, cordon bleu. We're not eating uh, filet mignon. You know, we, we know you cook well and, you know, you, you're able to come with all these biscuits and all this beautiful food, but it's not happening here. It's Big Macs on the menu. You <laughs> and that's what, that's- you know, the happy meal, that, that's what's going on. We don't care about you know, you know, you're a vegan, you hang out with Russell Simmons, uh, you, you, you practice, you know, yoga, none of that matters. You know what I mean? And we have to, you have to go to, you know, one thing with boxing, you know, back in the day, you know, I used to box as a team. And one of the things we had to do was, was study the tape of other boxers, study other fighters, see, see how they get down. If we study the track record of a Kamala Harris or a uh, mm. Lion Joe Biden, then we, we'll be clear. You know, I respect the folks that say, okay, boom, I voted for Biden because of the fact that I was tired of one old white man, so I wanted to come with another old white man who may not be as rude. It, it's mm-hmm. like uh, choosing your, your whether you want to be raped or you want a simple sexual assault. Either way, you don't want it either, either program. You know, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you don't want to be touched. And I think that once we, we look at it for what it is, we, we begin to change our tune. But for now, you know, that, you know, it's, it's all yeah. good in the hood. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, let's, let's shift. I wanted to shift gears with you guys, with you guys. I know that you guys are organizers um, and a lot has gone down. And, you know, I mean, this has been going down as far as police brutality, police murders uh, or them murdering us. Um, and when I say us, I mean black people. Um, yeah. And the, uh, there was uh, just news that came out about um, the Derek Chauvin case mm-hmm. and how the um, how basically the uh, judge reinstates third degree murder charge against Der- Derek Chauvin. Mm-hmm. So would you guys say that that is a, a step towards something great, particularly in, the, in this George Floyd murder? Or um, do you think that some, something will end correctly here? Mm-hmm. I mean, I think the, the track record is, don't get your hopes up, right? The, the track mm-hmm. record is that uh, the, the court system, the criminal justice system protects its own. It doesn't protect black people. It arrests black people 
it, it victimizes black people, it jails black people, it imprisons black people, and ultimately it kills black people, right? So I wouldn't get my hopes up um, as an organizer or as, you know, myself a former practicing attorney that just the reinstatement of uh, charges means anything around what will ultimately happen with the conviction. In fact, and I'll go as far as to say, you know, I think, you know, this is similar to Rodney King, as in this was mm. captured on videotape. Um, there's yeah. been outrage about it. The difference so far has been that free an outcome of a trial, there has been resistance in the streets. Um, and so the system may also sacrifice this individual cop um, in order to keep mm. things cool, right? Because ultimately what it's really about is do they maintain power and control? Um, and if that means every now and then throwing one of their own under a bus because the actions were so egregious, um, then that may happen. But that doesn't change the, the very nature of how policing is done on black people in this country. Yeah. Um, in fact, when we look at police murders, we're looking at the tip of the iceberg. Um, because, again, what we have is millions of stop and frisk, millions of arrests, um, millions of, of jailings and imprisonment. Um, and so we are excess labor and then we become cheap labor in prison. Um, mm. And that system still happens and still operates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're speaking, speaking my language, especially with the, the free labor, the slave labor that the prison industrial complex is capitalizing on every single day in this country. And it, 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 another story that I know you guys are familiar with um, right here in Georgia, Kendrick Johnson. Um, that case has been reopened um, and it was invest the teenager uh, who was found dead, rolled up in a gym mat uh, eight years ago. Um, the investigation has been reopened, according to Lowndes, Lowndes County Sheriff Ashley Polk. Uh, the investigation concluded the original investigation said that he accidentally slipped into the center of the mat uh, while reaching for a <laughs> shoe and got stuck. Um, the story itself is is disturbing. The insult to injury where they are playing on our intelligence is is what's infuriating. Um, I, I just kind of want to get your feedback in terms of what are you thinking in, in, with the reopening of the case? Because again, like we, even with the Derek Chauvin, I'm with you, Kamal. I don't. I, I'm I'm past the stage where I get my hopes up for any justice mm -hmm. from this injustice system. I think um, I, I worked with the family of Kendrick Johnson when the case first went down. You know, we've been supporters, uh, members of organizations has been back and forth, and it, it pains me every time I see the Johnsons because of the fact that I, I know that, um, you know, they, they have a, a sense of determination. You know what I'm saying? And it, it's like, unfortunately, it's only so far you can go. To me, mm -hmm. I, I think that these folks are playing with them, and it's unfortunate. I think that um, they're being tortured. I think there's been so many lies. I think they, they exhumed his body, I believe, uh, twice already. Mm -hmm. Sending my child to school and him never coming back and, and, mm -hmm. and you telling me some cockamamie story like he dropped his uh his uh shoe in the in the uh in the in the mat and uh got stuck in the mat. This this young man was an athlete. You know, for mm -hmm. one. Number two, mm -hmm. one of the things that a lot of folks aren't hearing is that the camera footage, it shows him going inside of the gym and never coming out. And then there's this space within the camera where, you know, no one knows what happened. The camera mysteriously uh, malfunctioned until the next day when they, when they discover his body. You know, so, uh, you know, it's, it's a disgusting case. But, you know, we, we, we realize that uh, and recognize that we're, in the state of Georgia, you know, and Georgia is a traditionally racist part of this, this, this American pie. It's a racist piece of this American pie. And if you look at all the cases from Catherine Johnson, the 92 year old who was gunned down here in Atlanta in our own home. If you look at the case of, uh, uh, the young man who was jogging, uh, back in February, uh, yeah. in Brunswick, Georgia. I Ahmaud, his name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ahmaud. Yeah, I mean, it's so many different, uh, you know, situations, but my yeah. heart goes out to the, to the Johnson because of the fact that they're truly fighters. But I think that um, what these people are doing is putting uh, uh, brown sugar on feces and calling it chocolate. And they're wow. trying to just, you know, have us keep hope alive. 
you know, but uh, at some point, there has to be some type of consequences and repercussions that go beyond uh, hoping and wishing and praying that um, they may decide to roll the dice and, and, and choose which one of their folks they want to throw under the bus. Mm. Mm. Fellas, um, I, I wish we had more time to explore more of, of these issues with you. I'd love to have you back. I, uh, but before you go, please tell everybody how they can support your program because it is I, I listen to it um, and it is definitely worth subscribing to and supporting. How can they find your work? Sure. Uh, our work is uh, Black Power Media um, uh, dot org. And, you know, we, we have a, a started a, a media company with uh, uh, Jared Ball, uh, Cherise mm-hmm. Burton Stelly. Um, uh, the Lukemans and some other folks uh, to bring a, a, a media pa- uh, channel that's firmly uh, ensconced in self-determination politics. So the YouTube channel is Black Power Media. Um, we, and all our different shows are there for people to listen to and to watch. That's what's up. That's what's up. Kamal Franklin, Kalanji Changa, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank and, you guys. And, and tell Professor Ball I said, what's up? I mix what I like. I love his work, too. I love you guys <laughs> yeah. working together. We had him on, and, yeah. and that was a very, it was, was, it was lovely. Love. <laughs> you guys are all, I, now I can see the connection now. I can see the connection yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, two dope brothers. We appreciate y'all, and we'd love to have you back anytime. Thanks so much. Hey, we appreciate you. It's good to see you uh, a little calm today. Last time we saw you, you was, you was about to rip it up, man. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what are you talking about, man? He's like, I'm always calm. Um, until, uh, until, 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 you, you know what I mean? I said, you know, I don't have my hoodie on today. That's what it is. I got, I got on my, uh, I don't know what jacket this is instead of my hoodie. But nah, man, y'all put me in that room with that. Listen, man, I can handle conversations with my revolutionary brothers who are further revolutionary than me to the left of me. What I can't handle are these cats to the right of me who say we need more capitalism. We need more Donald Trump. And we need that. That's stuff that set me off. So uh, y'all put me in the, y'all put me in the lion's den. And I had to, I had to react accordingly. So y'all go, if you don't watch anything else, go watch that episode. Cause it was, it was kind a lot and my shout out to our sister uh, Noah Changa uh who yeah, was yeah. on that episode with us that that was really dope shout out but, to Noah yeah